Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, I think uh, I am now appearing live in a couple of places, mm -hmm. so I can see myself on YouTube, and I'm just checking the taster course, so just give me a second. If you are seeing me, you've, I've already been on once and I'm back, so if you're seeing me twice in here and that seems odd there I am that's why um just so if you're seeing me twice and if you didn't know I was going to be here hi I'm here to answer questions about the full course but I'm also happy to answer anything that you have remaining from the free course anything that popped up for you and I'm a little bit early, Welcome so I'm just my chill. I'm Louise. Just going to let people come in. Uh, let me just turn that down. Okay, I can see people coming in on YouTube. Hi, Kathy, Ulrika, Peacock, and Fig. I'm guessing that's not your first name, but welcome. I think that's a business name. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, say hi, so I know you're here. Um, and I'm just going to chat for a minute or two about some a question that's come up a lot in our emails. And then if nobody has any questions, this will be an easy, quick call. And if you do, you can just ask me in the comments. If you're on YouTube, by the way, I believe you have to have a YouTube account to be able to do live chat on YouTube. But if you don't have a YouTube account, you can always leave a comment once the recording is finished and the video <clears throat> is on YouTube, you can always leave a comment and I'll check back and try and get to any questions. Hi, Jenny, Joanne, Ellen. Hi, Vietzke from the Netherlands. Uh, that's on Facebook and on YouTube, lots of people. Alison, Suzanne, Anne. Marieka, I hope I said that right. Red Wing, Christine. Nice to see everyone. Hi, Susan. This is your first live connection. Nice to see you. Um, so as I said before this, before we got to six o'clock, I'm here to, to answer anybody's questions about the full course if you have any. But I am also happy to answer anything that got left over from the free course. Uh, Diva is asking, does intuition play a role in your opinion? And that there is no expl explanation why certain things, colors, etc. Yes, intuition plays a huge role. And actually in Find Your Joy, the full course, we have a whole week at the end, towards the end, about intention versus intuition. Um, intuition is huge for me in the way I work. It isn't huge for everyone, but I do a I think, as you saw in the ugly painting video that I sent out, if you saw that, that a lot of how I work is to, um, is that is my focus, is just doing things intuitively and then seeing what happens. But I think that a lot of my intuition is guided by having a deep knowledge. It's a bit like when you're driving and you, 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 you're very experienced driver and you just sense somebody might run out here this this situation feels a bit dangerous i'm just going to keep my eyes open you your intuition is informed by experience i think that our intuition has to be informed by knowledge of how things work so if we just apply colors in any order they're going to not necessarily have the impact that we want because they won't necessarily look good together so I think there's an awkward stage for a lot of people where you have to learn all of these things like the way color works. And I don't just mean color mixing. I mean, how to put colors together that are going to look good no matter what. How uh, tonal contrast works and what that does with the painting, how composition works. And there's an awkward stage, which is a bit like driving when you're clunky learning how to use those things. But once they become second nature, then intuition can kick in. So I think intuition is always based on an understanding and a knowledge. And when it isn't, I think we can see it in the painting. I think we know, or oh, this person doesn't actually understand about these things. That's just my personal opinion. 
Um, Marieke, yes, you can. Um, Ramona, you are very welcome saying thank you. I'm writing an email that's going to come out tomorrow about all of the thank yous that I've had and um, but about the fact that the reasons why I teach are quite selfish and quite personal, that teaching and sharing my knowledge with as many people as possible and sharing my ideas with as many people as possible is actually rewarding on a very personal level for me and so when I do a free course like this it's not necessarily as generous as you think I've got my own motives behind it and I'm going to share that tomorrow um question the majority of testimonials are from newer artists when they started I'm a professional already can you talk a bit more about professional artists in the course if I don't know if you're on Facebook Dana um, but that would be a great question to ask in the group. I'm trying, I'm thinking of some examples now so I can speak about that. But obviously it's my perception of their experience and it's not their experience. I think professional artists don't need the course if they're happy with what they're doing and satisfied. So I think my course isn't for beginners or middle or experienced I think it's for people who want a change, want a shift, want to go deeper with their work at whatever level they're at. So if you're right at the beginning, that means setting off. If you're in the middle, it might mean becoming more attached to your work. If you're a professional, in my experience, the professionals who really benefit from the course are people who feel like they want more, something different in their work, but they can't figure out how to get there. This is a great process for that, for completely letting go of the past and moving into the future. So it really depends where you are. But it isn't. I answered someone else earlier. It isn't um, like if it, the person who asked this morning wanted to do portraits and I said, it depends if you want to take your portrait work deeper, find an intention for it, develop a personal voice with it then this is the course for you. If what you want to learn is better drawing um, and better ways to apply paint, like in the traditional Renaissance style of portrait painting, absolutely not the course for you. So it really depends what you're looking for. Questions about art tribe prices, that is going to come. We're going to let you know about that next week. We have to, we're a small team and I can't tell you how many emails we're answering at the moment and messages and and in the face, two Facebook groups we've got going now. So I have to have the whole team focused on this. And then when the course closes Thursday, it's Thursday uh, midnight Pacific time, American time, then we will switch our focus. And in a few days after that, you'll get an email about our tribe if you didn't join the course. Um, Patty, will there be any color theory in the class? Kind of. So I teach color in a different way than perhaps the traditional color wheel, but I do have a color wheel in there. So I am going to talk to you about the color wheel, but I've got a way of approaching color composition, tone and mark making, which is to look at two key principles and then to look at how they're applied in each of those areas. And those key principles cover, in my opinion, everything you need to know about how to use color composition tone and mark making so my way of teaching color is quite different but it is based on color theory I'm just not going to make you learn color theory I'm going to give you another way to think about color that's a lot easier and more fun and it's always going to be when we're talking about things like color and composition it's not about here are some rules and here are the ways you should do it it's about what do you like what do you respond to? What touches you? What gets you excited? Because if it gets you excited, it will get someone else excited too. That's the point of art is to put as much of ourselves into it so that we can connect with other people who feel like we do. Um, will the Facebook group be shut down after the 12 weeks or stay on for the year? Christina, actually, for the full course, the Facebook group goes on and on and on for as long as Facebook's there. 
because we've still got the 2019 group, which was the first time we had a Facebook group. We've still got them in contact with one another. There was one, I'm telling a lie, in 2018, but I ran it totally differently then. But 2019 was the first year it runs as it does now. The Facebook group from that is one of the closest knit group of artists that you can find. They're still going strong. And then every year after that is still going strong. So the group will continue for as long as people want to use it. And that is really great because with each module of you only get access to the videos and things for a year, which is to do with legal issues, not to be boring, but people who promise lifetime access to a course that's very problematic because who's lifetime and how can you guarantee that? What if the software provider shuts down? What if you die? What if, what if, what if, what if you get ill and you can't work anymore? So we don't promise that we give one year. However, there are downloadable PDFs for every module with all the learnings and assignments and journal prompts. Um, so all you're losing out on is the actual videos when we take that away. As long as you download every PDF, you'll have it. And then the Facebook group can keep working on these ideas and keep developing together. Um, one more YouTube question and then I'll go over. Bridget, will you have examples from other artists? Yes. So in um, not in the first few weeks, which is a lot about mindset and approaches and experimentation, the way we've been working in the taster. But once we get into the core principles, I've put together some videos for you of other artists work to talk through what I'm explaining so that you can see it in practice. Um, yes, Terrell, the content of the course is drip fed, meaning you get a module each week you don't get it all at once because people don't follow courses in my experience that go all at once. You've got to have it drip fed. And I've got to look into that. If I want to at some point turn this into something that you self paced, we need to work out how to do that. Uh, the f I'm also looking for communities. The Facebook group this year is so large, that's unlikely to happen. Not in my experience, Donna, our communities are, amazing my art tribe community is now at about 3,800 members it's it was as high as 4,000 and it will go over that again uh, once we let people in from the free course and that is an amazing community just depends what you put into it is what you get out of it in any community and the, uh, so uh, to answer that, the uh, course Facebook group will be less than that. It will be significantly less than that. So not going to be a problem for you. Let me go to Facebook and see if we've got any questions there. Deb, are we supposed to attend or view both Q&As each week? No, you can do. Some people do. They don't attend. Some people listen to them while they're painting, while they're doing their homework. That's what I like to do when on these kind of things. Uh, but you don't have to listen to both. You can just listen to the one where you've asked a question. You can not bother. Um, Caroline says, you've said it will take six to seven hours a week. Does this include the Q&A? Yes, that includes everything. So I'm saying if you watch the lesson videos, which are quite short, because I don't like you have to watch a lot of me talking. You watch the lesson videos. You do the assignments. You attend the Q&A. And on Friday, you watch the bonus content. If you did the assignments for an hour or two, we're talking about six to seven hours a week. You could do the assignments for a lot longer than that. So it's up to you how much time you take. You could attend, listen to both Q and A's. You could watch things again. That you can you can do the journaling for a long time or a short time. So the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. If you can't put in six to seven hours, I don't think it's really worth it unless you think you can catch up in later weeks and months. Bonnie, yes, there's two week trial if you decide it's not for you. Um, just looking at how does one get the transparent color on the background since I seem to be heavy handed with the paint. I'm not quite sure what you mean by the transparent color, Christina, but maybe you just mean a transparent color. Acrylic paints, and I did an introduction to acrylic paint video that you might want to go back and watch before it disappears. 
Acrylic paints are either transparent or opaque or somewhere in between. On the tube or the tub, there's usually some way of showing you. So for example, on golden paints, they have uh, three black bars going across and then you can, and then they put a swish of the paint over it. And if it's transparent paint, you can still see the back black bars. And if it's opaque, they get almost fully covered up. So if you want a transparent background, you need to be working with transparent paint. And that is the key thing. And some of that is just trial and error of learning. Annette says, I'm already signed up for a traditional watercolor course. If I did this simultaneously, do you think I'd be confusing myself or would it enhance my learning? These questions are like so hard to answer because the answer for one person will be totally different to the answer for another person, right? Like one, one person might thrive in that environment, another person might get utterly confused. So it's what I'm teaching you will be very different from a traditional watercolor course. On the other hand, those two things might really complement each other, but it's really about you and it and how your brain works and how you think you can handle competing or contrasting ideas. There'll be nothing that I would say that would contradict, I don't think, anything in a traditional course, but it would be very different. Yes, Nancy, there will be an option to join Art Tribe after the 12 weeks with a discount. Um, going back up just to see if I missed anything, back over to YouTube. Uh, is it two weeks refund after booking or after opening? It's two weeks after opening, Ulrika, but you're not going to want a refund, trust me. But it's two weeks after opening. Michelle, do you get tired repeating yourself? <laughs> no. The funny thing about teaching is you have to repeat yourself over and over and over again. Like in some ways, my whole teaching everywhere is find what makes you happy, do more of it, find what makes you unhappy, do less of it, and the end, finished. But we find all these different ways to say that and all these different ways to show that. And I know when I'm learning things, it takes me a long time to understand the concepts and it's the different ways people say it and the different and the repetition that makes it sink in. So that is so important for any teacher to be okay with coming at things from different angles, I think. And the questions really help with that because it helps me to see, oh, I didn't make that clear. And if it felt clear in my head, but other people are not clear. Suzanne, will you affirm my decision to take the course? I will be away for the first two weeks. Suggestions for prepping. Start at the beginning to catch up or jump into the course in process. Just thinking about the first two weeks. You could actually jump in in process or you could catch up, right? Again, it's how long is a piece of string? It's totally up to you. I am the kind of person who no matter what I'm doing, I have to start at the beginning. It does my head in to jump in in the middle. But you wouldn't lose out by jumping in the middle and catching up on those weeks later. Um, that, that would be fine. There's no reason why they have to go in that particular order, especially in the first few weeks. But just personally, I don't like that. So personally, I know I would stay up late catching up because that's the way my brain works. So you just do you just do you, Suzanne, do whatever feels best. But do not worry if you have to catch up in. We have a week. I think it's week seven where we don't have any new lesson or any new work for you to do. And that sometimes people go, oh, that's a con because you've only got 11 weeks of teaching and it's 12 week course. You will be so glad of that week when we get to it. I promise you, uh, you really need that week to catch up or to try something new or to go back to an exercise you really enjoyed. So you will have that time. Mickey, I hope that's answered your question, too. Uh, it's really up to you. It's not essential from my perspective. The free course closes on the 16th, but then the content from the free course comes into the website for the full course. So if you're on the full course, you get to go back to it if you want to for a whole year. 
Sabrina, do you give receipts that could be used for tax purposes, trying to make this possible? Absolutely, we do. You get a receipt automatically when you pay, which will come to email. If you need a different kind of receipt for tax purposes, like in the UK, if you need a VAT receipt or sometimes in uh, European countries, they need a different type of receipt. You can just let us know and we can manually make something for you. But the standard receipt is usually plenty for uh, work purposes. Rika, do you always start with an ugly painting or do you sometimes start directly with light and bright colors if you're inspired to? I start with all sorts. I start with whatever I feel like. So it can be really different. Sometimes I start with collage, layers of collage, which I use a power sander to sand back and layers of paint and some drawing. Sometimes I start that way. So it's totally varies. Um, Mickey says in the US, PayPal and some credit cards let you pay in installments for not percent financing. That's very interesting. I don't know about that. Maybe I should have read upon that, but it, that's something to check out if you need to. When I logged in and says to pay for the course, I saw a coupon option. Is there one? The coupon option is for returning students who get it. When you come back and do the course again, you get an extremely, extremely steep discount. And that is what that coupon is. So you don't need it. Elizabeth, no, I don't use a power sander on Canvas. Um, just checking. Let me go back to Facebook. Sally, oh, I have dental surgery, 21st of November. Ooh, I hate the dentist, which I think will take me out for a week at least. Um, I'm assuming I can catch up at that stage. Absolutely. Most people miss or fall behind at least one week, and that is totally fine. Watercolor, Karen, thank you. I answered that this morning and I was going to answer it this evening and then I got on another tangent. Um, one of our moderators for the free course, Susan Priest, worked with watercolor on at least one go round of the course because she's done it a few times. And she really loved the doing the course in watercolor. Um, I do not work in watercolor, so none of my demos are in watercolor. And sometimes people get hung up on that because what I do is I do your assignment every week and I release it at the end of the week. I don't want to interfere with what you're doing. I want you to do it on your own. And then I show you what I did. That is a way of demonstrating the approach, the mindset, the way I approach painting. It's not a way of demonstrating techniques. So it doesn't matter that I use acrylics and you use watercolor. The assignments can all work with, excuse me, pastels, watercolor, acrylics, oils, and caustic. If you ever feel you need help adapting it, like for example, in the free taster, when I mentioned about different kind of marks, some people said, well, we can't make marks with watercolor, which is not true, as I'm sure you know. You can do all sorts of things to make different kind of marks with watercolor. And it just took a bit of imagination to think about that because you might be seeing other people use acrylics. But if you're interested in expanding, changing your work, um, taking things to a deeper level, finding your style or your voice or your reason why, if you're understanding interested in improving your paintings this course will work no matter what medium julia neither you asked if i prefer paper or canvas i usually prefer wooden panels um, but i do work on paper quite a bit don't like canvas again this is very personal um Ayo, I am at a traditional art school is it clever to tell my teacher that i'm taking this course or workshop I have no idea. A lot of traditional art schools might not like this. Some might really love it. I think if they saw it, they'd like it, but I don't know. Bonnie, can you please tell us the difference between the course and art tribe? Yes. So think about art tribe like a magazine subscription. Each month we do something different, usually a couple of things, new extra things. We it, Art tribe is inspiration, ideas, some months we'll be teaching something you're interested in. Some months it won't be anything you're interested in. Some months I'll be talking about how to design a website. Some months I might be doing something on color. A lot of months I'm sharing 
what happens behind the scenes on my painting process. We have a monthly creative challenge that my community manager, Tracy, runs. We do a weekly studio notes video where a different member shows us around their workspace and talks about their art. It's very much um, a hodgepodge in the nicest way of art and creativity. And you dip in and out as and when you want something. It's at a low price to keep to make it accessible so that you don't have to feel you have to watch everything and do everything. We do a monthly Q&A with me. So that's the similarity which is on any topic that you want to ask about. And um, a course is totally different. A course is, you are here. I want to get you here. What's the path we take? I've structured a curriculum and a framework to get you from one place to another. So we have assignments. We have homework. We have journal prompts. We have um, bonus content that I curate for you to watch that ties into the theme and our Q&A sessions are very much related to that week's learning so it's a totally different beast the only similarity is I mean I guess I'm the similarity there will be ideas and things shared in common between the two but you won't join Art Tribe and learn what you'll learn in 12 weeks on this course on the other hand this course doesn't sustain you for an art life and Art Tribe can do that because it's just ongoing. Um, don't have to apologize for your questions, Julia. Are the weekly video lessons already recorded or do you make these each week? Uh, yes and no. Um, yes, they are already recorded. Um, this course takes me six months of work every year because the first three months before you know anything about it. I'm recording videos. Restru this, this year, I completely redesigned the course. That meant restructure. It's a bit like changing the composition of a painting. You take one part out or add one part, you realize, oh, that changes everything. I've got to go in and restructure this and move that. Can I fit that idea in or do I put this idea in? So I had a month of a month and a half of designing everything then about um three weeks of recording the videos then I have someone edit the videos then I look at the edits then we get all the text ready so we have all this pre-preparation I could not do that on the fly because I need it to to work as an orchestrated experience that all has to work together and take step by step like going up a flight of steps but then during the course, things come up and I say, oh, I just want to add in that video. I've also got a back catalogue of videos from prior courses. And sometimes I put an older video in because I realize the group really could benefit from that this year. Or I see everyone discussing something. So I pop in and make an extra video. So it's a bit of a combination, but I keep us very much on a structure because that's what makes it such a successful course. A lot of times people who teach are online, there's some really good teachers, but there are some who are simply winging it, teaching you what they do. And it's not a proper adult education. It's not structured in a way that helps you learn. I was trained in adult education because I used to work in HR and in training and development. So I'm lucky that I have that background. So I kind of have, I know how adults learn and I know how to structure things in a way that works. So I'm not going to really mess with that, but I do add some things as we go. Let me just go back to YouTube. Um, Not familiar with mount board. What I saw online, it seems to be pretty thick and hard. Yeah, it is thick and hard. It can be cut with scissors. Um, I don't know if it comes in different thicknesses. Mount board is just one suggestion. It's thicker than paper. It's something that here in the UK you can buy in big sheets in any art supply store because it's used for cutting out the mounts to frame pictures with. And so it's quite common. It's relatively inexpensive um, compared to, say, watercolor paper. So it's just a suggestion. You don't have to use it. I have one of those uh, guillotine things that I pull down and it chops things. But you can cut mount board with good scissors. Do you have to do the full course before joining Art Tribe? Absolutely not. No, they're two completely different things. So they're unrelated in that sense. So no, you do not. 
Uh, Donna, as a newer painter, I would like to try a few styles. Can that be an intention of the course? Or do you recommend sticking with one thing? Yes, please try everything, Donna. This is I'm so passionate about this, whether you're on my course or not. If you are a beginner or a relative newbie, you should be trying everything. You know how my, my teenage neighbor is doing a foundation course in art at the moment. She's just started. And they're teaching them photography and printmaking and textiles and graphic design and Photoshop and fine art. And they're having them try all these things so they can start narrowing down what they're interested in. And then if they choose fine art, they're going to have them do painting and drawing and more printmaking and work their way through everything so they can start to see what they love and it's the same for you if I would love it if you tried an abstract assignment and a realist assignment because every week we have both sometimes the instructions are the same depending on the exercise sometimes the realist painters get a totally different instruction to the abstract painters and if you've got time to do both or even come back after the 12 weeks and do the other ones try everything try every medium try every style it's the only way you find your own way is to t do as much as you can. You do not try and narrow yourself down too soon. That is that rush for results that I mentioned in the taster course. I want to be, you know, an artist with a style. So I must rush there. Just you, you're doing exactly the right thing to try everything. Uh, Bridget, how can I do the work away from my studio? What material can I take easily on a trip? Again, how long is a piece of string? I don't know how much you can carry, where you'll be. You could take a few tubes of acrylic and a smaller piece of paper, but can you use acrylics where you're going? You could take watercolors. They're easy to transport and easy to use, and they don't make as much of a mess. Um, it'd be a great question, actually, for the Facebook group about travel kits because lots of people I do not take art supplies with me really when I travel um because I'm really like to be in my own space but I would put that in the course Facebook group and see what people suggest Penny I took both courses in 22 just listening to you it sounds like 23 will have something different hi Penny yes well um you took both courses, so a lot of the ideas from Find Your Voice are coming in to Find Your Joy this year. That's why it's longer. So I'm not sure that you're going to find anything particularly different, except I've got different ways of explaining it. I've redone the videos. I've come up with some different assignments at certain points, but I can't remember how many are different, to be honest. Um, and we have a new ongoing assignment that you'll start on week one and finish in week 12. That's new. Um, but uh, it won't be massively different, Penny. It's, I believe it works. You know it works from having done it, so I don't want to mess with it too much. But I didn't want to do Find Your Voice again this year. I wanted to keep it to the end of the year and then and then stop and give time for something else to come through some other creative ideas so that's why I've melded them into one also I think it can work as one course and not require people to pay for an extra course this year Penny if we are trying lots of different things is it essential to choose five artists we like from the start no I don't think I understand that question Penny mm. Somewhere at the beginning, I do ask you to look at a few artists that you like, but it's not to guide everything you do from that point on. It's only to begin you on the process of understanding what you respond to. Um, Ulrika, yes, try everything you can get your hands on. I love it. Try it all. Um, I think I'm done with Facebook questions. I'm just going to come back over to YouTube. And I think I'm done with YouTube questions. So the email that's coming out tomorrow, I just want to speak a little bit about while I have a few minutes and I've got you here. Because as I was writing it, I was getting really jazzed up about it. Um, I don't think I've got my notes in front of me. So I'm just going to have to tell you about it off the top of my head. But I was writing an email about why I teach and why this is important to me. And 
whether or not you're staying for the full course or whether you're just going to um, do the free course and that's it, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this, that the reason why I teach and the reason why this is so important to me is for a variety of personal reasons that I'll get into in the email, finding your own voice, particularly women of a certain age, mine and older, but also some men and also younger women, finding your voice changes your entire life And I didn't have my own voice for most of my adult life. I made myself small. I kept myself quiet. I didn't make a noise. I didn't make a fuss. The idea of doing what I'm doing now would would have blown my tiny mind. I did that so that I didn't bother people with my bigness, that I didn't um, intrude on anybody with. I felt ashamed and guilty of how I was because I was always a lot. And even as a little kid. And once I found my way to accepting myself and being proud of the fact that I'm a leader, being proud of the fact that I initiate things and get things moving, that I trigger people into action, that that is actually a strength of mine to do that, not a weakness. Once I got comfortable with myself, which happened through making art, by the way. It happened in me deciding to invest time and a little bit of money on courses, mostly a lot of time on working on my art. When I did that, the investment in myself, and and I suppose the the couple of courses I took, the, the willingness to say to myself, you are worth this and you should have this. It was all part of me finding my voice. And once I did, my world changed. Like I never thought I could teach. That was a surprise. I never thought that so many people would want me to teach them enough that I could make a living, enough that I could employ other people and give them a living, enough that I can care for people who depend on me. I never thought that was possible. I used to work like mad at a job I didn't like just to keep paying the bills. And then when I found my voice, everything opened up and my dreams literally came true. It's unbelievable. And my personal life improved. And I'm not saying I have a perfect life, by the way, because if those people who know me and what's gone on for me in the last few years will know that's not true. But I am much stronger and more able to cope with what life throws at me. And it's because I found my voice. And this loops back round to why I'm so passionate about this is The free course is a little bit of a trick. And I know there's been some people who do the usual accusation of you're trying to trick us into giving you money. I I always get that every year. I don't, it's not that kind of a trick. The real trick is that I want to trick you into seeing what you're capable of and seeing a little glimpse of what's possible when you let go and when you work with freedom. Because if I get you to do that, it's like Pandora's box. I don't think you can squash it back down again. I think it's going to keep popping up and you will have to deal with the fact that you are an amazingly creative being with a massive amount of stuff to offer the world. And I want to instill that in you, initiate that in you, get you to believe that, spark that in you so that you can never go backwards after that eight days. Doesn't always work for everyone, but I know it works for many, many, many people. And so that is the trick here. And then some people who find, you know, art is really important to me. They are then ready at certain times and not always the same year to say, it's time for me to put some money into this. It's time for me to treat myself instead of everyone else around me. It's time for me to have this for myself. When they make that decision, that's another layer. But some of the people who don't come and take my course, they do it in other ways. Maybe they make a space in their house for a studio, which they've never had. Maybe they tell their spouse and family members, you know, you're going to have to make dinner two nights a week because I'm going to be painting. Whatever it is, people start to make those changes. And when they do, things start to change in their life. And I can understand if you don't believe me, because if I listened to this five years ago, I wouldn't believe me. But there you go. I am living proof. So that is my motivation for doing this. I want more good art in the world. I want more 
people who are creating happily. It's good for your physical health. It's good for your mental health. It's good for everyone around you. And that is why I teach the free course. And that is what I hope to trigger in people all over the world after this is all done and dusted. And next week, when you all go on your own ways, the ones who are not continuing with me, I hope that you will start to make changes as a result of this. Uh, I'll just check one last time for questions. Um, yes, Dreaming Cat Studio, I answered that. Any other medium, it's up to you. Um, oh, sorry, decoupaging glass right now. I am not so sure. I am not so sure about things which are not painting, drawing related, to be honest. I mean, the principles I'm teaching all apply. The mindset stuff all apply. The assignments, I don't think, would be relevant. Jan says, shrinking to fit the world is something women of our generation have a habit of doing. Being too much, too loud, too pushy, we're constant refrains. Thank you for this. Yes, exactly. And I think my parents were lovely people. I do not like have any, harbor any ill will towards them at all. But little girls in my era, and I bet yours, Jan, were not, as you say, supposed to be telling everyone what to do. And I was. And I now see that that is just how I am. I'm always going to tell everyone what to do. You don't have to listen to me. You're free to shut me up and, and you know, turn me off and go away. But I'm not going to shut up anymore. Um, Ulrika, it's just a bit insecurities keeping me still, fearing my courage, maybe. I'm about to be booking. You know, I think if we're frightened of something, this goes for painting. If you're frightened to try something in your painting, I think that fear is a sign you're on the right track because being an artist is about taking risks and pushing things forward. Whenever you're feeling a little bit of fear, it's a sign that you should do that thing, even though it would be more comfortable not to. Because when we stay comfortable, we can't grow and develop. And for some of us, that's really important. I know it's not for everyone, um, I've got lots of friends and family who don't want to grow and develop, but I always want to be doing that until the day I'm not here anymore. Marilyn says, what do we need to have ready on Monday? Um, the instructions will all come out on Monday, Marilyn, but you'll just need some paint and paper and brushes and tools. Nothing fancy. Ulrika makes a great point. I've never invested that much money in something besides my children. Now, are you worthy, Ulrika, of investing in yourself? Are you as worthwhile as your children? I think you are. Um, and I think they would think you are too, by the way. Um, and there isn't limited space, but there is limited time to sign up. Um, we finish on Thursday um thursday the 14th at midnight california time um donna says as a sculptor and metalsmith i have found that the taster course has already freed me in those disciplines but i am curious and looking at this new medium as a creative person that's interesting i wouldn't have thought of using it that way but i you know, how creative are you, I guess, is the question. We have had a sculpture or two and a ceramicist before in the course. Um, Elizabeth says, which artist is up there for you? Oh, so many. And I go through so many phases. I'm on a Jean-Michel Basquiat phase at the moment. I just bought the most beautiful book that I'm just drooling over. I absolutely love Tracy Emin. Always, always. Um, just for her honesty and bravery and her strength as a woman in a man's world. And um, absolutely love Jackson Pollock and all the abstract expressionists. Um, love Cy Twombly. Um, but also I love, uh, there's a semi-realistic painter called Raymond, I'm going to say this wrong, Raymond Stapiens, S-T-A-P-I-E-N-S, love his still lifes. Um, Jenny Saville, who paints people, love her. 
Um, so lots and lots and lots of people, and I've probably thought of other people. Uh, Gillian signed up for the course already, started the pre-work, but every time I hear you speak, I hear more valuable bits. Thank you. Oh, that's nice of you. I feel like I'm just winging it tonight. Um, Diana, I'm so pleased I have lit a fire under you. That is all I wanted out of that free course. Um, question, Leslie says, as a relative beginner, what type of palette would you suggest for acrylics or other types of paint? Um, if you're signing up for the full course, Leslie, there's a whole um, course on acrylics in there when you start, which is just there because I know a lot of people use acrylics and I show a palette there. But I use a stay wet palette, which is basically a dinner tray from the supermarket covered in soaking wet. Uh, kitchen towels and then with tracing paper or baking paper over the top and that keeps my paints wet but people use all sorts of things one of my coaches uses a big pers sheet of perspex I went on a workshop with an artist a very successful artist who used scraps of paper of cardboard rather for his palette um I think I'm at the end of the questions so Annie says all this applies to sculpting too. It does, of course. And I, I suppose, Annie, I was just a bit worried about whether the actual assignments I'm setting, when I say take a big sheet of paper and divide it into four, into you know six pieces and do this or, or paint this thing, I was wondering how the assignment could be applied. But for the person who was decoupaging on glass, I suppose you could do the assignments as painting assignments and you're learning from that, which you can then bring back to the other work. Um, oh, Aurelia, I love that. Aurelia, I saved all the dollars I made from a recent job that made me so miserable. I promised I would never work at that kind of job again. And now I'm using some of that money to pay for this class. Wonderful. You were, am I saying that right? You were, you were, I apologize for butchering your name. How can I purchase the course? We've been sending out emails, you were. I will also put a link in with this video on YouTube. As soon as I finish recording, I'll edit this and put a link. You can also go to my website at louisefletcherart.com. It's right there on the homepage or it's under the learn with me tab. Um, okay. That is it for me. I think I've done all the questions. I think I've rambled long enough. Um, I have really enjoyed this free course. I have a couple more emails coming out to you of an educational nature. The first one is tomorrow's that I'm working on now. Then I'm putting together a video for you about art journaling and how I use that to develop my work um, and how it will be used in the full course um, but in the meantime, till then, I'll say good night. I shall go make my dinner. I hope you are going to have a good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. And I'll see you soon.